Hello my Soka universe. Well, I have been feeling kind of tired and sleepy and with low temperature, so doctor said take the week and cure yourself resting. That's what I've been doing the most of the day. I have not been doing much except lying on the couch a lot or in bed. And the positive from that is that I think I'm almost over prepared. I saw too many highlights from Spain, France, especially so yeah that's where it goes uh, again i'm mixing the three leagues together make a nice background here and the good news the other good news is uh, i'm wearing now psg because they actually had a good week after what happened last weekend um, but as i said the good news is that i have ordered a few more jerseys that will actually you know, liven things up a little bit more, especially Liga, there will be a little bit more coming, but I'm not telling you uh, what. Because of that, I also decided that I will not do now the um, La Liga or a Liga review after Premier League review next, not even the Bundesliga one. I will actually go with uh, Serie A first. Uh, yes, it does make sense uh, in a way, but on the other side, you know, Serie A is also one exciting one that I want to do. So uh, that will be the next jersey review after the Premier League review, but I am not sure when I actually will get to it. Get to it. Let's look at what happened in La Liga over the weekend. Again, only seven games with only the one for Barcelona, which would have been the big uh, clash rescheduled for January. Atletico Madrid, Sevilla and Elche still have not played a game yet, but at least we saw the champions. Um, who, and let's take the last game first, it was a rather poor performance of overall. Yes, chances on both sides. David Silva made his debut for Real Sada, but ended goalless. Uh, if we start on Saturday early on, uh, Villarreal against Eibar um, was actually quite interesting. I have to say, it is really weird to see Dani Parejo play for Villarreal, honestly. Uh, they had a goal from Gerard Moreno um, ruled out in the first half. In the second half, Kike actually gives Abar the lead, but they are a little bit too open and allow Villarreal to go, uh, to go back with uh, Moreno first getting the equalizer in the 63rd after Chukwese assist, and then uh, Moreno um, also assists the uh, winner by Alcacer. There was marginally not offside, so uh, Villarreal was a lot offside, but in this case they weren't. First goal this Dizdisla was also offside, although it was a really beautiful play, but it was a clear offside uh, there. So Villarreal 2-1. I have to say Villarreal is a, for me an early tip, making it into the... At le you know, they could play a role in the battle for the top four. Um, Getafe gets a fully deserved win over Osasuna. The goal by Jaime Mata was actually originally not given, but after VAR um, looked like it, um, they confirmed the goal. And I think Cucurella played an awesome game in that one. It's an awesome game also by Iago Aspas, who is the life insurance for Celta Vigo. He scores the first goal, who, which initially was also not given for offside, but you can see then in the review that it was onside. Makes it 1-0 for Celta. Valencia only showing tentatively. And I have to say it was also interesting, you know, light blue against orange is not something you see in club soccer a whole lot. Um, however, Gomez, right in the 46 minute with a wonderful shot, um, Maxi Gomez, uh, makes it 1-1, one, a one, uh, really, really nicely taken uh, goal. He didn't celebrate because he has been playing for Celta. However, Iago Aspas with a free kick makes it 2-1. And that settles the game. Celta Vigo had many more chances to decide this game earlier. Uh, and Valencia almost got the equalizer late on. But Celta Vigo, who is slowly becoming my favorite team in Spain, you know, outside of the, the big ones, gets another win. Uh, I actually... I did not really see it, but I had it on TV while I was watching uh, Chelsea Liverpool. OSK against Cadiz, uh, not much. Negredo, remember him? Scores and makes a 1 0 for Cadiz, and then very late, late on with a goal that I still don't understand. Pombo uh, had it in, but you know, seemingly all the defenders from OSK were converging onto the, uh, onto the um, um, Siski or Malbasic who then uh, crosses in and Pombo can easily head in. Weird, weird goal. Um, 
That was Sunday early on. Um, Betty's very well deserved win over Valladolid. Um, I, I, I was curious jersey by Valladolid, but I'm not. I, I think I, I actually like it, but uh, especially the second goal uh, by Kawaii in the 18th minute. Wow, wow! I mean, the, the way the ball drops to him and he takes it easy to go in. Uh, the first goal by Fekir makes it 1-0. And then uh, Granada gets another win. As we will see, they will be again at the beginning of the season very high up. Uh, Roberto Soldado uh, make it 1-0. Uh, José Lu gets equalized for Alaves. And um, the game then is kind of even back and forth. But Granada through Machis gets the win. And they had a good week because they also won in the Europa League. Which gives us our first table uh, with a second table. The first time that there are lots of, and you see there are lots of movements. It's usually like that. Uh, with Granada and Betis enjoying perfect starts that uh, you will see of a Villarreal and Celta also being up there. Um, again, not much there because, as I said, Barcelona, Atletico, Sevilla and Elche have not played yet. And you see Barcelona is actually also favorite. That's why they're up there in the middle at the moment. I'm really curious how the season for Barcelona will go. Uh, we will see Barcelona next week playing as VRL. It's a late game. I think this is a very intriguing matchup. It's a tough game. Tough for a first game for Barcelona, but then VRL might just play open enough that it is um, easy for them to get. Betis against Real Madrid, I also think, is an interesting matchup that one should look at. And I realize that Alaves has a new crest and I'm still using the old one. This will be rectified by next one. Atletico Madrid against Granada is another sleeper in there. Let's move Liga. Oh boy, I watched a lot of Liga. First, we had from the round, first round, the last three games were had to be made up. Uh, Montpellier actually beats... I'm not saying surprisingly, because Montpellier had already a good game against uh, Nice, but it was more or less um, a penalty was given that Savanier uh, converted, and then when Awa was sent off for tripping, all right, uh, that the game actually went into Montpellier's um, direction. Savanier makes it 2 to and only late on, but uh, the penalty makes it 2-1, uh, the final result. PSG stumbles and rumbles and misses chances, still not finding their feet. And you know, with many uh, missing, then Diallo gets, a, who already got the first minute, the yellow card gets another one. Rather nitpicky send off. And everyone thinks, yeah, this is it. Thomas Tuchel gone and PSG officially in crisis. And then when you thought it ends nil nil, this was a game, two teams that had not won, had not scored a goal. In. And then Julian Draxlov, all people in stoppage time, heads it in. And it is one little PSG and the uh, world looked a lot brighter already. And if you're a PSG fan, uh, it even looked brighter with the performance of Marseille against Celta Tien. This was the exact opposite. Two teams that had only one um, so, so, so far and were sitting top of the table. And surprisingly, I thought Marseille will uh, take a huge boost from the win over PSG. But it was actually Celta Tien who really uh, played well. And already in the sixth minute, through Hamu Ma get an early lead. Marseille had a little bit more, and it actually stifled Marseille. Marseille was not really, really there. Um, had only a few chances, um, and Buanga in the 75th makes it 2-0, and that actually settled the game. And that led to the first rectified table in this season for France, where everyone had three games, and Saint Etienne were top of the table ahead of Stade Rennes. You know, of course, they move down a little bit, and PSG suddenly move out of the relegation zone, and that is something I have to turn into the 15th spot. Marseille missed one, I think they could have really moved up uh, further there. Um, and then the weekend, lots of interesting games. Uh, Lyon again not getting out of it. Lance beating Bordeaux 2 1 was or, or, already a cool result. But uh, Rennes against Monaco, I actually saw some of that game, not uh, all, 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 all of it. But that was a really interesting one. Wissen Ben Yedda, I mean, Rennes was the better team. But Wissen Ben Yedda uh, uses when Nsonsi and I think other defender were not kind of the same wavelength. Let the balls are doing this and Benjeda slams it into the net and at that point the game breaks for Rennes. Benjeda actually hits the post in the second half but so does um, uh, Rennes who then late get a finally 
um, uh, equalizer through Nsonzi uh, after a Truffer uh, assist and Truffer came only on because in the first half Moassa got, uh, got injured. So uh, he made a huge contribution because he also got the winner late. And I have to say I was very happy because Arena is one of those teams that I really enjoy watching and I'm, I'm really lo lo looking forward to seeing them. Also saw a bit of Nice against PSG. In fact, I actually turned turned on, uh, switched over and I saw a penalty. The penalty was a little bit soft, but you probably can say, okay, all right. Um, and Mbappé converts PSG playing with the new away jersey, which are very similar to this one. I have to say this one, I have still like a little bit better to be honest. Uh, so, but Mbappé made the whole difference. Uh, he came back from his Corona uh, break if you like uh, and he took Nice apart he was fouled for the penalty then he assisted a uh, shot um, in the four, in stoppage time of the first half that then Di Maria puts in and um, Di Maria also assisted Marquinhos to make it 3-0 um, and Mbappé goal in 7-7th was, uh, was called off for offside through VAR and he then went off. Uh, this was the first. PSG is back more or less with that. Um, very interesting local derby. Uh, not a huge game, but you know, uh, if you know anything about the French geography, uh, Brest and uh, Lorient are relatively close together in the Bretagne. So that was a huge game for them. And it ended with 3 to win for Brest, uh, who took uh, lead. In the 30th and in the 32nd to make it 2-0 uh, and then two minutes later an own goal. 34th made it 2-1, so kind of exciting first half. Brest largely the better, better team, they make it 3-1 um, in the 62nd and in stoppage time uh, the other consolation goal for Lorient. But uh, will be interesting, Metz beats Reims, it's also a local uh, game for their first win. Uh, so that was, was another big one. Montpellier um, also having a strong season. Starts of season 4 1 against Angers, and Strasbourg also finally gets a win against Dijon, who is still winless now on the bottom. Not against uh, Saint Saint-Étienne was, uh, I think, then the game that everyone looked forward to. Not having a so and so start, and Aushish, who is a great talent for Saint Etienne, already played great, great, great against um, Marseille, gets the early goal. Um, the game rather level most of the time. It was then a little bit later when um, a goal for uh, from the front was called off for offside. Also, that was a really nicely played, was just an edge offside. When uh, Macron makes it, makes it then 2 0 for Saint Etienne, you think game done, but not developed a fight. Five minutes later, Simon makes it um, uh, 1 2 and more in the 85th. 2-2 and then the game really was about to turn, but it ends 2-2. Um, Marseille, Lille, Marseille didn't look good. Lille was largely a better team, especially in the second half. And when they took the lead through Luis Araujo, you thought this is uh, this is it. And they actually should have probably made the sack. as a goal, but Germain very late gets an equalizer. So in France, we have therefore now the following table after four rounds, Saint-Étienne and Rennes. And we will see, they will meet very, very, very soon. Uh, top, top of the table. Also, I want to say the goal average 2.5 is not that great, but look at the disbalance measure. It is very even. If you look at the points, it's very, it's very evenly spread. So uh, France still relatively tight, everything together. But I fear that when PSG takes off, uh, that this will change. Um, as I said, Montpellier and Lens have a very good start. Uh, Lille, so-and-so, uh, Monaco, and we have to see where Marseille is going and how PSG is going. And I was surprised to see Stade de Reims that low in there. Metz moving out, Strasbourg moving up. Dijon is the one team that really seems to be in trouble at the moment. And they're also very lowly rated, as you see. They're uh, also favorites at the moment to get relegated. Um, the next round, we have Lille playing Nantes. Uh, that's already a... Pretty interesting matchup, but it's all about Saint Etienne against Rennes Saturday at five. I think it's a game I need to mark because that will be interesting uh, for sure. Uh, Southern Dar between Bordeaux and Nice. Reims plays at home to PSG. Yeah, I think this would have looked a, little, a lot more in in interesting a week ago. Uh, other than that, I don't see any huge matchups, but you know, you'll never know. 
In Portugal, we had the first round and this round is not finished, but I said, okay, if it's Porto Marense que Passos de Ferreira, please for, for, forgive me for not uh, putting that into the round, the round of, I want to get two videos done on Monday. So yeah, that is not there, but we have Benfica's huge win to start against Family Cow, 5-1. We also have a pretty big uh, game in Nacional against Boa Vista, but it was Porto against Braga that was the standout fixture uh, there, where Braga actually really played very smart and actually saw uh, all, the, all the goals and a little bit of the game. Played really, really smart and stifled Porto. Uh, Porto had a goal uh, disallowed, but then Castro, who actually had played for Porto before, made it 1-0. I just didn't understand why Braga isn't playing in the red uh, jerseys. Jer that, that, that looked weird. And so you, the commentator even said, and just I was about to summarize how uh, intelligent Braga was preparing everything, then Sergio Oliveira had it in to make it 1-1 uh, in stoppage time. And then as a penalty given. Yes, it was a penalty. It, it was a penalty, 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 penalty call, although Everyone, it was maybe not uh, intended there. Teish, 2-1. Out of, you know, out of nothing turns around and then Porto play it, plays at home, they get another penalty that Teish can convert. And it is 3-1 uh, for Porto there. Yeah, other games, Santa Clara Maritimo with an island duel, 2-0, no, Moreranje Farense 2-0 no, and Tondela Rio Ave 1-1. One, one. So the first uh, round in Port Port Portugal, we have the big boys up there already and well to go. And I think Braga will quickly climb in the table as well. In the next round, let's see, Braga is playing Santa Clara. We have a um, Porto Derby between Boavista and Porto. Benfica plays Moreranje, also an interesting one. And Sporting, whose game was postponed, and I couldn't find, find out why, plays Passos de Ferreira. So, there you go. Anyway, that was a lot of stuff in there. Let me know what you saw and your thoughts on everything. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. As I said, our Liga uh, is kind of exciting already. For La Liga, we need to see the big boys coming. And yeah, uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.